Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Analog panel meters, a thing of the past now that we're in the digital age, right? Well, before you come to that conclusion, take a look at this. Take a look here at Amazon. See all the panel meters that they have? Goodness gracious, look at that. Some real, oh, that's a really cool looking one. Or how about McMaster Carr? McMaster Carr has all kinds of them here. And then Newark Electronics. And here Simpson has a whole bunch that you can get. Various styles and shapes. And then Granger, even Granger has analog panel meters that you can get. Brand spanking new. And there are a lot of reclaimed ones available too. Check out eBay or Hamfest. A quick search for analog panel meter on eBay yielded over 3,000 results. So, analog meters aren't quite dead yet, and there are some really cool looking ones out there too. Now, if you're not familiar with analog meter movements, there's some things you may not be aware of that will affect how accurately you can read them. What I want to do here today is provide you a quick tutorial for your edification. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment below. I make a concerted effort to respond to every comment. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. So, what is the first thing that we have to remember? To begin with, we have to remember that analog meter movements are mechanical devices. And as a mechanical device, it is subject to the effects of friction. The armature pivots on its mounting points, but doesn't necessarily come to rest where it would if friction wasn't an issue. Now, some meter movements are more subject to this limitation than others. It depends a lot on their age, the amount of use they've had, and the quality of manufacture. Now, before you take a reading of an analog meter, gently tap on the meter face. This provides some vibration, which will allow the force of the internal spring and the force due to the magnetic field caused by the current through the armature to position the needle precisely at their equilibrium. Probably one of the most important aspects of reading an analog panel meter for maximum accuracy is overcoming parallax. Well, what is parallax? Well, it talks about a change in the apparent position of an object relative to a more distant object caused by a change in the observer's line of sight toward the object. Now, here's an extreme example. The position of this tree through the falling snow relative to the power pole in the background changes drastically as my line of sight changes when I move left and right. The reason? Because there is a distance between the tree and the pole. Now here is an illustration that helps us see the effect. The guy is moving along while he is looking at the tree and seeing the power pole in the background. The position of the tree relative to the power pole changes as he changes his point of observation. Now inside the meter there is a distance between the needle and the scale behind it. The greater the distance between the needle and the scale, the more you have to be careful of parallax error. As you move past the needle left and right, the needle's apparent position relative to the scale will change. You must read the meter directly in front of the needle position, line of sight at right angles to the needle to get an accurate reading. There are some meters like this one on my old analog volt ohm meter, which have a slim knife-like needle with a mirror behind it. To read this accurately, you move your head back and forth past the needle until you only see one needle as opposed to the needle itself 
and its reflection. When the needle's reflection is directly behind the needle, the reflection is hidden by the needle and you will only see one needle. This puts you in perfect alignment with the needle and the meter scale to get the most accurate reading. Lastly, not all meters are designed to be mounted in all positions. While this is not generally an issue, it is possible that the position of the meter might make a difference in its performance. So for instance, laying it on its back might not work as well when it's being held vertical, such as it might be in a panel. Consider the zero position of this old aircraft panel meter. I have carefully zeroed the meter as it sits on the bench. Its face is vertically oriented. Now, watch what happens when I flip it on its back, facing upward. The needle has moved a full half of a scale division, which is two and a half amps on that scale. Reading an analog panel meter is simple and straightforward. If you follow these three simple rules, you will get the best accuracy when you read that meter. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.